dear students continuing with the chapter of forced vibration today in this lecture we will discuss a problem on rotating unbalanced system i dr balraj singh brad from yadavindra college of engineering talwandi sabo india i am presenting the lecture problem is an electric motor is supported on a spring and a dashboard the spring has a stiffness of 5000 newton per meter and the dashboard offers resistance of 400 newton at a velocity of 4 meter per second the unbalanced mass is 0.5 kg and it rotates at a radius of 4 cm and the total mass of vibratory system is 15 kg the motor runs at 500 rpm and we have to determine first damping factor second amplitude of vibration of electric motor system vibrating system and the phase angle third resonant speed and resonant amplitude and next is forces exerted by the spring and dashboard on the motor the figure shows an electric motor say an electric motor of mass m with unbalanced mass m not rotating at an at an radius at a radius of e with angular speed of omega so this unbalanced mass is subjected to a centrifugal force fc which is m not e omega square vertical component of centrifugal force this component is fcv is m not e omega square sin omega t so now this vertical component acts like an external excitation and the system is supported by springs of net stiffness k and a dashboard having a damping coefficient c so the external excitation results in the single degree of freedom vibration system vibrations in the system and of system vibrates along x axis about the equilibrium position of the system the differential equation for such a vibratory system unbalanced rotating system is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is m not e omega square sin omega t mx double dot is inertia force cx dot is damping force kx is spring force and m not e omega square sin omega t is the vertical component of centrifugal force and is external excitation this is basically the same similar to forced uh, equation for forced vibration only thing is amplitude of external excitation is in the present case m not e omega square so we know the differential equation and given is uh, from the problem k stiffness of the springs is 5000 newton per meter damping coefficient is given to be such that it offers a resistance of 400 newton at a velocity of 4 meter per second so damping coefficient becomes f by velocity x dot 400 by 4 100 newton second per meter e eccentricity of unbalanced mass this is the e at the radius which unbalanced mass is rotating is 4 cm mass of unbalanced uh, unbalanced mass m not is 0.5 kg total mass of the vibratory vibratory system including the unbalanced mass is 15 kg now we have been given that the electric motor is rotating at n rpm n means 500 rpm is given then the angular speed in radians per second is 2 pi n by 60 this is the relation we know so substituting the value of n to be 
500 in this problem 500 rpm this is in rpm we calculate and we get that angular speed omega for the present system is this omega at which the electric motor is rotating is 62.83 radians per second next first problem was to find out the damping ratio now for to find out the damping ratio it is as if the system is not subjected to any external force and this mass m is supported by k spring and c damping coefficient then the critical damping is relation is cc is 2 times on root of km this is we have derived now we substitute the value of k we substitute the value of k it is given we substitute value of k 5000 newton per meter and mass value of 15 kg we calculate that critical damping coefficient is 547.72 newton second per meter then natural frequency of the system omega n is a natural frequency of undamped system without considering any force external excitation is on root of k by m now substituting the value of k 5000 mass 15 kg we saw that natural frequency for this vibratory system is 18.257 radians per second and so from the definition of damping ratio damping ratio is ratio of damping coefficient to critical damping of critical damping c is given to be 100 newton second per meter critical damping we found 547 so we calculated that zeta damping ratio for the r system is 0.182 it is an under damped vibratory system with this very small damping in the system now for the case of unbalanced rotating system we know this is the differential equation and under steady state condi uh, conditions vibrations means when the transient vibrations have vanished from the system the solution we know x is only particular solution and is of the form a sin or sin of omega t minus phi omega is the angular frequency or angular speed of the exciting force in this case it is the angular speed of the rotating mass and a is the amplitude of the vibration phi is the phase difference by which it is lagging behind the external excitation now the upper plot shows the plot of external excitation in our case external excitation amplitude is this is the external excitation amplitude m not e omega square and its frequency is omega it is simply a sine curve with the this amplitude and now our particular solution is means our system is vibratory vibrating about this equilibrium position under steady state conditions when complementary solution has vanished means transient vibrations have vanished from the system say it vibrates it again vibrates with omega frequency same as of external excitation let amplitude is a and phase difference is phi so we have derived the relation for a to be ratio of a to m not unbalanced mass e by m which is a dimensionless number is equal to 
omega by omega n whole square divided by and root of 1 minus omega by omega n square this brackets whole square plus 2 zeta omega by omega n this whole square we have derived this so we will be putting the values different values and finding out the a and for phase difference we will use the relation tan phi is equal to 2 zeta omega by omega n divided by 1 minus omega by omega n scale so these two relations we will be using determining the amplitude of vibration and the phase difference phase difference is not much of much importance in practical problems only thing is by changing different parameters we can control the amplitude of vibration in the system usually we want a to be less so by while designing such a system we can control frequency ratio we can control unbalanced mass we can control eccentricity we can control total mass of the system and in the natural frequency we have two variables we can control stiffness of the spring we can control total mass of course as discussed and we can set such a combination that amplitude has reduced to a acceptable limits now first of all let us discuss uh, calculate amplitude of vibration as we discussed relation for a is given in the form of dimensionless number a by m not e by m is equal to omega by omega n square by same denominator term now we have been given different values and we put the values to find out a we put mass unbalanced mass it is 0.5 kg it is rotating at 4 centimeter means 0 0.04 meter total mass of the system is m including unbalanced 15 kg omega is the frequency of external excitation means rotation of the motor it is 62.83 radians per second natural frequency we have calculated to be 18.257 radians per second similarly in denominator we put omega we put omega n omega and we put omega n and we put the value of damping ratio to be 0.182 we calculate this this comes out to be 0.145 centimeter so now we know that our system for the given problem will be vibrating with an amplitude of 0.145 centimeters now we have to calculate phase difference phase difference is the angle by which our, the amplitude plot of the vibrating system will be lagging behind the external excitation so this will be given by phi and for calculating phi we have a relation tan phi is 2 zeta omega by omega n to 1 minus omega by omega n whole square now omega by omega n is frequency ratio we calculated and it came out to be 3.44 so for the given problem we have a frequency ratio of 3.44 we put the values in the relation for tan phi zeta to be 0.182 we put omega and omega n basically these are frequency ratio so this can be also in some books uh, denoted by r value so our relation can be of the form 2 zeta r by 1 minus r square in some books it can be given like this so we put the values we saw 10 5.1155 and phi is 176 degree 
33 minutes. Moreover, we can get an idea from phase, uh, phase frequency response curve, which gives us that for omega to v omega n value say 3 for in our case 3.44 means to the right of this for zeta 0.182 so we have this blue plot of zeta 0.05 this light green is 0.3 so in between somewhere here here will be our plot of 0.182 so when we move trend goes like this we will come to this value near about this value and we know it is very near to 180 degree as is shown by the as is shown by the phase frequency response curve so it, the relation answer is verified from the calculate the Resonant speed and resonant amplitude, we have already calculated the natural frequency of undamped system, which is n root of k by m, already calculated to be 18.257 radians per second. Now at resonant, uh, resonance, when omega is equal to omega n, we have derived the relation that A resonance to ratio m naught e by m so this whole term is a dimensionless number is equal to 1 by 2 zeta for the present case zeta we have is 0.182 when we put this value comes to be 2.75 so now from amplitude frequency response curve between this dimensionless number between amplitude and m naught e by m to frequency ratio omega by omega n at resonance omega is equal to omega n or omega by omega n is 1 this red when we move along red line this light blue color is for zeta damping ratio 0.15 r is 0.18 so 0.18 plot is expected to be somewhere here so we will have amplitude to m naught by e m ratio to be somewhere here somewhere here and we have calculated it became to be 2.75 for our system and we verified it from amplitude frequency response curve 2. once this has been calculated or from direct relation a resonance is multiplying m naught e m here m naught e by 2 m zeta now we put the values m naught unbalanced mass 0.5 eccentricity 4 centimeter means 0 0.04 meter damping ratio to be 0 0.182 total mass of the vibratory system to be 15 we can put it and we know that amplitude at resonance is 0.366 so at resonance this system will have more amplitude and we have to avoid the condition of resonance in the vibratory system in the actual practice so obviously we can avoid the resonance when we move to this region when we increase the frequency ratio of operation of the vibratory system either we can increase the speed of external excitation or rotor speed or we can decrease the natural frequency natural frequency decreasing means we can decrease the stiffness of the springs and we when we have to decrease so we can we want omega to be omega n value to be more so for that frequency ratio increase omega or decrease natural frequency now natural frequency is so in actual practice this is a hint we want to decrease natural frequency to increase the frequency ratio 
so to decrease this k should be decreased or mass should be increased so in actual practice you can decrease the stiffness of the springs increase the total mass of the rotor or you can increase the speed of rotation of the motor to reduce the amplitude of vibration to the minimum value which which gives that minimum value which we can attain at certain speed certain minimum speed we will be on right side so it is a by m not e by m dimensionless number one so we can we can at the most go to one so this is the relation hint which helps us in designing the rotating unbalanced systems properly next part was we have to calculate forces exerted by the spring and the dashpot on the motor for the present problem say external excitation is external excitation is f not f not is making an angle omega t omega t is the angle from a reference line f not is making omega t angle from the reference line and spring force is k a it is lagging behind f not by phi we have calculated for r problem phi was out is near to 180 or 176 degree it is an obtuse angle so plot of vector diagram will be nearly as is shown in the figure so spring force is like this then k is spring force spring force f spring amplitude k at 90 degree to this at 90 degree to this we have will have a damping force further at 90 degree to damping force we will have inertia force now this green is damping force its amplitude is c omega a. so we have we know damping force from vector diagram is f damping is c omega a c is damping coefficient omega is angular speed a is the amplitude of vibration we have calculated already and spring force is k a and these forces it, their resultant is their resultant is fr which is resultant force so it is given by relation resultant force fr is damping force care plus spring force care undoed so net force which the spring and dashboard are transmitting exerting on the motor we can find out from these relations now damping force we put the value of c 100 newton second per meter omega 62.83 radius per second a we have calculated to be 0.00145 so damping force becomes 9.11 newton spring force k a we put k 5000 newton per meter a again 0.00145 we calculate spring force became 7.25 newton now in resultant we put the value of damping force we put the value of spring force applying the pythagoras theorem we know resultant force so resultant force is 11.64 newton is the force which the spring and dashpot are exerting on the motor similarly according to newton's third law law motor is exerting a force of 11.64 newton on the spring and spring and dashpot system which is further being transmitted to the base or the support of the system with this the Solution of the problem is complete. Thanks, my dear students.